We want to define athlete in the broadest possible sense. The 70-year-old who uh, goes for a brisk walk, the first-time marathoner that wants to break four hours, an elite cyclist. There are emerging athletes and aging athletes, uh, and we want to address that entire population. What do we tell somebody who's 40 or 50 or even 60 or 70 years old and has been sedentary and now wakes up and says, hey, I want to get on this wonderful bandwagon. How, where, how do I start? What am I allowed to do? What do we tell them? And their physician is going to want them to get specific advice from a group of experts who have knowledge and resources in the area of exercise. Whether it's safe exercise for an individual has risk factors. And as we've learned, uh, individuals who are long involved in physical activity and regular exercisers, they are not immune to heart disease. One of the things we don't know are why, for example, why do extremely healthy athletes that are really the epitome of all the benefits that exercise confers, why do some out of nowhere develop certain types of arrhythmias like atrial fibrillation? These are individuals that are desperate to continue their exercise, but they want to know is it safe and we want to know what are the origins of that kind of condition. We've got two sort of general lines of investigation. The one that we're working on that we're most excited about is an opportunity to work with the Canadian Olympic Rowing Committee and the Canadian Olympic Rowing Association to collect all the information we can on every elite national team Canadian rower going back since the first days in the 1930s. We would like to know for their sake and to find out what are the long-term outcomes in rowers uh, do they have any cardiac consequences of continuing high-level endurance exercise for decades at a time? I love sports. Uh, I play hockey in a pickup league uh, two, three times a week. I like to cycle as well. I do really enjoy sports and I find for a multitude of reasons it's very satisfying. You know, you get the physical activity, you get the aerobics, uh, you get the camaraderie with friends. I was playing hockey on a Monday morning at the beginning of, of November. This particular Monday morning I'll never forget because I had no energy. I felt really weak and I couldn't wait for the buzzer to go. I spoke to Dr. Farku probably the third week of November or just in yeah, November and he said, let's just order the CT angiogram. You know, let's just make sure everything is fine. And thank God he did because I think he saved, not I think he saved my life. The next night they put the stents in and Six months later, I'm, uh, you know, I'm not back to where I want to be yet, but I'm, I'm definitely on the, you know, on the right path. I felt great, like I was in good shape. I'm a skinny guy, I watched my weight. You know, I fell off the entire month of November. I was very lucky that my cardiologist had a, you know, had an inkling something was up, wanted to make, wanted to make sure that everything was fine. It turned out it wasn't. I think education is what's needed, more research, whatever better public awareness to, to let people know that, hey, you know what, you, you want to do this, but you better make sure that your heart is in, is in a condition that it can, can handle what you're asking it to do. And we need to understand who are these tiny minority, how to identify them, how do we protect them, are there ways that they can exercise to limit this particular risk, and for the majority of athletes, of course, how do we encourage them to exercise safely in a way that they get the maximum benefit uh, and, and the greatest, what you might call technically, beneficial cardiac remodeling. The heart gets stronger, the body gets stronger. We're concerned about the weekend warrior, the uh, 55 or 60 year old who plays their weekly game of pickup hockey. And from the research that uh, we have all been involved with, we know that, that those individuals perform exercise at a very intense level. Yet there's concern in the general public that that's an ideal location to have a heart attack. We need to clarify that, but we also need more research so that we can set the bandwidths of what safe is for the wide population and for the individuals who may have specific issues but want to continue their exercise and we need to be able to do more of that type of research. I've collaborated now with Dr. Jack Goodman and what we've done that's really exciting is we brought our skill set together. We've actually measured the actual heart and lung pressures of these masters athletes right? and we are actually able to understand the capacity that they have to actually drive themselves to that degree of, uh, of performance. 
So we've brought that together and we've done some experiments that can't be done anywhere else in the country and only a few places in the world to do these types of invasive experiments in the athletic population. I mean, we really need one place where athletes uh, and potentially patients can go with confidence that they're going to get the best medical advice, the best possible testing, the best training advice, the best nutritional advice. If we can put that all into one place, I think A, we would be more efficient, we would learn more, and the patients and the subjects would be in the the community would be much happier because they don't have to now run around and find the best sources of information. It would be informed by research and that research would drive the machine so that we could not only uh, answer critical questions but we could contribute to advocacy and that we could educate the general population, the athletes, the physicians uh, who want that help, they want that advice. Uh, and as you've said, to have a one-stop shop facility at one of the best institutions in the world would be a great advantage.